I have found time to be the most precious thing that I have. Time is something I know that in the past I've probably taken for granted. You don't necessarily know about tomorrow, so for me now, time is as precious as it's ever been before. I'll never forget the first day they told me my life was in danger. As crazy it will sound, I, I'm grateful for my cancer diagnosis because it has taught me to live life with more intention because you, you promise nothing. Through our experience with my dad's cancers, both multiple myeloma and prostate cancer for the last nine years, will do anything in my power because nobody should have to deal with cancer. Cancer doesn't stop. It doesn't slow down because of some pandemic. I think we are so busy fighting this pandemic that we have forgotten about fighting cancer. It has taken resources away, those researchers, those scientists, from trying to find the cure, from the goal of the Bee Foundation. That is why, more than ever now, after 2020, every penny truly counts. When you donate to the Bee Foundation, you will save lives. That is a precious gift. There are so many people that have come up to me who said, I don't even follow sports, but I know who Jimmy V is because not just of what he said on that stage, but how he said it. I am one of the people that have benefited from the V Foundation. Jimmy V giving that speech 27 years ago has helped save my life. Thank you very much. Thank you. I can't tell you what an honor it is to even be mentioned the same breath with an author, Ash. Um, this is something I certainly will, will treasure forever. But as, as uh, was said on the tape, I, and I also I don't have one of those things going with the cue cards, so I'm going to speak longer than anybody else has spoken tonight. That, that's the way it goes. Time, time is very precious to me. I don't know how much I have left, and I have some things that I would like to say. Hopefully, at the end, I'll have something that will be uh, important to, uh, to other people, too. But I can't help it. Now, when I'm fighting cancer, everybody knows that. Uh, and people ask me all the time about how you, you go through your life and how's your day. And nothing has changed for me, as Dick said. I'm a very emotional, passionate man. I can't help it. That's being the son of Rocco and Angelina Valvano. That just comes with the territory, right? We hug, we kiss, we love. And, and when people say to me, how do you get through uh, life or, or each day, it's the same thing. To me, there are three things we all should do every day. If we do this every day of our life, you're going to have, what a wonderful, number one is laugh. You should laugh every day. Number two is think. You should spend some time in thought. And number three is you should have your emotions moved to tears. Could be happiness or joy. But think about it. If you laugh, you think, and you cry, that's a full day. That's a heck of a day. You do that seven days a week, you're going to have something special. And so I can't help. I rode on the plane up today with Mike Krzyzewski, my my good friend and a wonderful coach, but people don't realize he's a 10 times better person than he is a coach, and we know he's a great coach. He's meant a lot to me in these last five or six months of my battle. But when I look at Mike, I think we competed against each other as players. I coached against him for 15 years, and I always have to think about what's important in life is to think to me of three things, where you started, where you are, and where you're going to be. Those are the three things that I try and do every day. And, you know, when I think about getting up and giving a speech, I can't help it. I have to remember the first speech I ever gave. I was coaching at Rutgers University. That was my first job. All I, oh, that's a, wonderful. And I was the freshman coach. That's when freshmen played on freshman teams. And I was so fired up about my first job. I see Lou Holtz, Coach Holtz here. What was it like the first job you had, right? The very first time you stood in the locker room to give a pep talk. That's a special place, the locker room, for a coach to give a talk. So my idol as a coach was Vince Lombardi. And I read this book 
called Commitment to Excellence by Vince Lombardi. And in the book, Lombardi talked about the first time he spoke before his Green Bay Packer team in the locker room. They were perennial losers. And I'm reading this, and Lombardi said he was thinking, should it be a long talk, a short talk? But he wanted to be emotional. He said, be brief. And this is what he did. He, he, normally, you get in the locker room, I don't know, 25 minutes, a half hour before the team takes the field. You do your little X and O's, and then you give the great Newt Rockney talk. We all do. Speech number 84. You pull them right out. You get, you get ready. Get your squad ready. Well, this is the first one I ever gave. And I read this thing, Lombardi. What he said was, he didn't go in. He waited. His team was wondering, where is he? Where is this great coach? He's not there. Ten minutes. He's still not there. Three minutes before they have to take the field, Lombardi comes in, bangs the door open. And I think you all remember what great presence he had. Right, great presence. And he walked in, and he just walked back and forth like this, just walk, staring at the players. And he said, all eyes on me. And I'm reading this in this book, and I'm getting a picture of this Lombardi before the, his first game. And he said, gentlemen, we will be successful this year. If you can focus on three things and three things only, your family, your religion, and the Green Bay Packers. And, he, like that. and the rest of it, they knocked the walls down. The rest was history. I said, that's beautiful. I'm going to do that. Your family your religion, and Rutgers basketball. That's it. I had it. I'm, listen, I'm 21 years old. The kids I'm coaching are 19, all right? And, I, and I'm going to be the greatest coach in the world, the next Lombardi. And I'm, ready, and I'm practicing out in a, right, right, right beside the locker room. The, the manager's telling me, you got to go in. Not yet, not yet. Family, religion, Rutgers basketball. All eyes on me. I got it, I got it. And now finally he said, three minutes. I said, fine. True story. I go to knock the doors open, just like Lombardi. Boom. It didn't open. <laughs> I almost broke my arm. I was like, you know, it was one that didn't open. Now I'm down, the players are looking. You know, coach, get, you know, help the coach up, help him up. You know? And now I did like Lombardi. I walked back and forth, right? And I was going like that with my arm, get the feeling back in it. And finally I said, gentlemen, all eyes on me. And these kids wanted to play. They're 19. Let's go. I said, gentlemen, we'll be successful this year if you can focus on three things and three things only. They said, yeah. They said, your family, your religion, and the Green Bay Packers, I told you. I did that. I remember that. I remember, I remember where I came from. It's so important to know where you are. And I know where I am right now. How do you go from where you are to where you want to be? And I think it, it, you have to have an enthusiasm for life. You have to have a dream, a goal. And you have to be willing to work for it. I talked about my family. My family is so important. People think I have courage. The courage of my family is my wife, Pam, my three daughters here, Nicole, Jamie, Leanne, my mom, who is right here, too. And, and, and that screen is flashing up there 30 seconds. Like, I care about that screen right now, huh? <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got tumors all over my body. I'm worried about some guy in the back going 30 seconds, huh? You got a lot. Hey, phenomenal, buddy. You got a lot. <laughs> All right, get you. Are you kidding me? Right, nuts. I got, I just got one last thing. I urge all of you, all of you, to enjoy your life, the precious moments you have, to spend each day with some laughter and some thought, to get your emotions going, to be enthusiastic every day, and Ralph Waldo Emerson said, nothing great can be accomplished without enthusiasm. To keep your dreams alive in spite of problems, whatever you have, to be able to work hard for your dreams to, become, to come true, become a reality. Now I, I look at where I, I am now and I know what I want to do. What I would like to be able to do is to spend whatever time I have left and to give and maybe some hope to others. All right, Arthur Ashe Foundation is a wonderful thing. And, and AIDS, the, the, the amount of money pouring in for AIDS is not enough, but it is significant. But if I told you it's 10 times the amount that goes in for cancer research, I also tell you that 500,000 people will die this year of cancer. And I also tell you that one in every four will be afflicted with this disease. And yet, for somehow, we seem to have put it in a little bit of the background. I want to bring it back on the front table. We need your help. I need your help. We need money for research. It may not save my life. It may save my children's lives. It may save someone you love. And it's very important. And ESPN has been so kind to support me in this endeavor and allow me to announce tonight 
that with ESPN's support, which means what? Their, 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 their money and their dollars and they're helping me. We are starting the Jim, Jimmy V Foundation for Cancer Research. And its, and its motto is, don't give up, don't ever give up. And that's what I'm going to try to do. Every minute that I have left, I will thank God for the day and the moment I have. And if you see me, smile and maybe give me a hug, because that's important to me too. But try, if you can, to support, whether it's AIDS or the Cancer Foundation, so that, that someone else might survive, might prosper, and might actually be cured of this dreaded disease. I can't thank ESPN enough for allowing this to happen, and I'm going to work as hard as I can, you know, for cancer research, and hopefully we'll be, maybe we'll have some cures and some breakthroughs, and I'd like to think, I'm going to fight my brains out to be back here again next year for the Arthur Ashe recipient. I want to give it next year. I know I've got to go. I've, I've got to go, and I've got one last thing. I've said it before, and I'm going to say it again. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind. It cannot touch my heart, and it cannot touch my soul. And those three things are going to carry on forever. I thank you, and God bless you all. There are ways to be counted, wise to ask. I will fight, thoughts to collect. I will fight for you. Every step in their story is measured and magnified by a factor of one. That first phone call was 820 on a Wednesday. On February 25th, 2015. 2016, January 5th. May 23rd, 10 o'clock at night. The day after Christmas, 2014. One word. So I'm one of those kids who has cancer, but it's in my blood. One fear. I don't want to lose my daughter, and it scares me to death that she has a chance of not being here. One question. Why me? After another. And what's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen How in is this going to affect us? How is it going to affect my wife kids? Gonna if I don't make is it? my mom going to live to watch me walk down the There's aisle? There's a million questions. One challenge. 300 nights in the hospital. Probably upwards of 10 surgeries. After another. Two bone marrow transplants. Chemotherapy, radiation. They had given me three months to live. Now we'll hold. She's 48 years old, and I'm about to lose my wife. It's not supposed to happen that way. No matter what this world we hope his treatment is working. We hope for good results each month. We hope he doesn't relapse. We just hope. There's a reason why there's survival odds. And the reason why there's survival odds is because someone beat it. I am thriving and I am still alive because of the research. They stand for clear. And I'm a walk-on placeholder at the University of Minnesota. I'm also a four-time cancer survivor. So don't give up on me. Next year, an estimated 1.9 million Americans will be diagnosed with cancer. We need your help with a fight that began one night when one man gave one speech. One last thing, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. Cancer can take away all my physical abilities. It cannot touch my mind, it cannot touch my heart, and it cannot touch my soul. And those three things are going to carry on forever. One legacy carried on with one donation after another, after another, after another. Don't give, Don't, give Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't ever. Don't ever, Don't ever give, up. give up.